Okay, let's try that again. Apparently, if I get a phone call in the middle of my lives, then I get no more audio. So, <laughs> fun times. Okay, so um, high protein. Uh, this is something I've been trying to share for a long time, and I want to give you guys some reasons why you might want to be more conscious of how much protein you're taking in. I have seen this time and time and time and time and time again, especially because a lot of my clients come from the keto world, and maybe they've been doing lower protein, which I actually don't recommend on keto, except for a very, very tiny, tiny portion of the keto community who's doing it therapeutically, but I'm more a fan of a higher protein keto and higher protein in general. So, um, Jose Antonio published a study in the 2016, in 2016 in the journal, the ISSN journal, the International Society of Sports Nutrition. And in this study, they had two groups. Um, these guys went through a, I will define high in just a second. They had two groups go through a eight week resistance training program. And one of the groups did one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So think of what that, how many pounds are you? So that's how many grams of protein. That was the low group. The other group did 1.5 grams of protein per pound of body weight. And so had about five, they had 500 calories extra than the other group because they were eating that extra protein. They added more calories for that. They both gained similar strength and muscle gains, but the ones that were eating the extra protein, so 500 extra calories actually lost an average of five pounds of body fat during that eight week period as well. So why does this happen? One, I, I, there's a few things. Um, one that comes to mind easily for me is that protein, it has a thermogenic effect. We have to burn calories just to digest protein. So around 20 to 30% of the calories consumed from protein, our body burns just to digest it. So that's cool. <laughs> and the other thing is, um, I was there's a study that I reference in my book, Short Term Keto. It's coming out at the end of this month on the 21st. It's on Amazon and all the things. But I reference a study that um, when you isolate macronutrients in terms of satiety, protein has the longest lasting impact on satiety. So that's pretty cool just for anybody. Like I, That's why I eat a lot of protein because I know it's going to keep me full for a long time. And man, there's so many studies that I, I could reference. I could put them in stories for you guys if you'd like, where they show astronomical increases in strength, muscle, athletic performance. And I also like to talk about the impact on neurotransmitters because protein is full of the amino acids, the building blocks of our neurotransmitters for good mental health, tyrosine, tryptophan, things that help us build dopamine and serotonin. So for me, when I went into this higher protein approach, and, and I experienced this, when I first made my huge transformation, I was eating high protein, probably somewhere between one and two grams of protein per pound of body weight. I was like, I felt like I was living off protein, you know, it was so much more protein than I was used to. I gained a ton of muscle, lost a ton of body fat, but I also noticed huge increases in my mental health. I was like, I, I call it my accidental personal awakening. I was like, my mind is operating at full tilt here. Like I feel freaking good. So, um, so on, in terms of how much protein someone asked, one, I was at least one gram per pound of body weight and, and match that to training. So you're using that protein to help you rebuild your muscles. Absolutely. It, it is life changing. I've got a client right now that she was coming from keto and I'm looking at all her tracking her food logs. And I'm like, dude, you're like, <laughs> you ate like 50 grams of protein yesterday. Like we've got to switch this. It's all fat you you did that. You got the keto benefit. Good job. And like now it's time for body composition changes. And sure enough, as soon as she shifted into the higher protein and dropped that fat down a little bit, now everything is rolling. So anyway, um, you know, you can look up that study, Jose Antonio 2016 ISSN um, study about what I'm talking about here, but it's in terms of satiety, athletic performance, mental health, all the things and all this, this, when I first started doing the higher protein approach, I was like in the closet about it because there was so much stuff out there. Like you're going to ruin your health. You're going to have high calcium. You can have kidney issues and all these problems and more and more and more studies are coming out completely opposing all of that. So unless you have some sort of genetic, you know, you know, for sure it's like a thing with your doctor that you've got like kidney, a kidney disease, you know, unless it's something like that, I can't emphasize how helpful pushing protein is and getting you where you want to go. You actually burn calories just from eating it. Isn't that cool? One gram of protein per current weight, current weight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So, you know, today, for example, sometimes people ask me to share what I eat a day of eating. I'm like, oh God, I don't even feel like I can. It changes a lot. But one thing that doesn't change is every time I go to eat, I think protein. And what can I add to my protein? <laughs> so I had like a ground turkey burrito bowl for lunch. Um, and then for dinner, I had like nachos, <laughs> just a little bit of chips, organic tortilla chips, yep, carbs, and um, some uh, turkey that I cooked in my, I'm sorry, chicken I cooked in my crock pot and made nachos out of it. Tons of chicken, lots of chicken. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, protein, I'm telling you, it's just like, you can just, I'm like, just do it. Even if you look at, um, look at bodybuilders. Look at bodybuilders. They are like living off protein at the, towards the end of their preps. And they're like, I don't recommend only eating protein because you're going to get brain dead if you don't eat enough fat, you know, and for optimal athletic performance, if you're going intense, you want some carbs too, unless you're doing your keto phase for your metabolism. But look at these guys. They're freaking, they're getting jacked and shredded. Like, look at the results people are getting from what they're doing. Now they also are brain dead and you're, you just want to give them a hug and tell them everything's okay because <laughs> they're not eating enough fat to support mental health and, and steroid sex hormones and healthy cell membranes and all those things. So we want some fat on there too, but focusing on protein is huge. Um, how do you measure it? So I recommend using my fitness pal app. Yeah. And then if you want to like weigh actual meat, yeah, get a food scale and learn the ropes of that. I did that for so long. I can literally look at chicken or turkey or whatever. And I'm like, I know exactly. I'm like that six ounces right there. All right. No, 240 calories, but you know, like you get the hang, you get a hang of it real quickly. So, um, but if you don't have that yet, you got to kind of go through, you got to wear, wear the training wheels, you know, and learn. And so get a food scale and track your food for a little while. So you understand what's going in your body and the results you're getting from what you put in your body. So anyway, I got to go, but just want to drop that with you. Uh, protein is a game changer. And if you're, think about it, if you're eating mostly carbs and fat, you're eating mostly energy sources and it's very easy to go over in our day and age. So protein's not actually an energy source. And I know a lot of people are like, you don't need very much protein. And I'm like, well, what is the goal though? Do you want to shift your body composition into losing body fat and building muscle? Then yes, you do <laughs> want to do that. It's real, real, real helpful. Yeah. And the amino acids, man, that's where it's at. So yeah, from mental health to body composition to, uh, strength gains, performance, athletic performance, all of it. Protein is a game changer. So don't underestimate it. Okay. Love you guys. Bye.